struck to meet with Kim Jong Un I may but above maximum pressure must remain, officials say. President Trump will accept an invitation by North Korean dictator Kim Jong Un to meet, the White House confirmed Thursday night, in a dramatic development after months of saber rattling between the two world leaders. Kim extended the invitation and the president agreed that the two would meet I may. South Korean National Security Advisor Cho Yu Yong announced at the White House. Kim Jong-un talked about denuclearization with the South Korean representatives, not just the freeze, Trump tweeted. Also, no missile testing by North Korea during this period of time. Great progress being made but sanctions will remain until an agreement is reached. Meeting being planned. Trump, according to White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders will accept the invitation to meet with Kim Jong-un at a place and time to be determined. But, Sanders added, in the meantime, all sanctions and maximum pressure must remain. Earlier Thursday, Chu announced that Trump would meet with Kim to continue the goal of denuclearization. Kim expressed his eagerness to meet President Trump as soon as possible, Chu said. President Trump appreciated the briefing and said he would meet Kim Jong Un by May to achieve permanent denuclearization. Kim, according to Chu, understands that joint military exercises between South Korea and the U.S. would continue. The North Korean leader, according to recent talks with Chu, also claimed to be committed to denuclearization. He Kim pledged that North Korea will refrain from any further nuclear missile tests. Chu said, adding that Trump's leadership and maximum pressure brought us to this juncture. Chu said that along with President Trump, he is optimistic of continuing the diplomatic process. But he added that the pressure will continue until North Korea matches its words with concrete actions. News of the willingness of Kim to meet with Trump follows recent high-profile talks between North Korea and South Korea. Earlier Thursday, Trump announced that South Korea would be making a major statement about North Korea. Chu met at the White House earlier in the day with U.S. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. Chu and other South Korean officials briefed the White House Thursday on a potential diplomatic opening with North Korea after a year of escalating tensions. Chu told reporters Tuesday that he had received a message from North Korea intended for the United States but did not disclose what it was. Trump and Kim have had a contentious relationship during the last year as both men dramatically increased the rhetoric against the other amid the backdrop of increased nuclear and missile testing by the North Korean regime. In August Trump warned Kim that, if pressed, the U.S. would unleash fire, fury and frankly power, the likes of which this world has never seen before. At the time, the president argued that Kim had been very threatening beyond the normal state, adding that the regime best not make any more threats to the United States. However, threats and counter-threats continued into 2018. The U.S. should note that the button for nuclear weapons is on my table, Kim said during a January 1 speech, according to a translation. The entire area of the U.S. mainland is within our nuclear strike range, he continued adding that the United States can't never start a war against me and our country. The next day Trump hit back against Kim by claiming that the U.S. nuclear arsenal was more powerful. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times, Trump tweeted. Will someone from his depleted and food start regime please inform him that I to have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his and my button works. The last round of significant talks involving the U.S. and North Korea concluded in 2009. The so-called six-party talks, which involved the U.S., North Korea, South Korea, Japan, Russia and China, ended when North Korea walked out. Fox News John Roberts, Kristen Brown, Jennifer Griffin, Rich Hudson and the Associated Press contributed to this report.